Okay, <coughs> let's start. Okay, uh, so first question here, we have uh, particle P, okay, mass 2 kg, uh, move along the uh, slope. Um, the angle is 30 degree and uh, P is initially at rest, okay, uh, at a point on the plane with a uh, force of uh, 20 Newton, okay, it's applied to P parallel to and up the slope. So uh, first, complete the uh, diagram, okay, showing all the forces. So for this one, it's not difficult to do. We have got um, the 20 Newton is already given, okay, um, by the arrow, okay, that is already given earlier in the, uh, the figure. So um, the other forces that we have is the, um, the weight, so we have uh, 2G for the weight and also the, uh, the reaction force, okay, this is a normal uh, reaction force. Okay, so that's uh, basically all our um, forces. And um, part two, find the velocity of P in terms of T times second whilst the um, force of 20 Newton is applied. So because uh, for this one, we need to find out um, the acceleration first. So when we actually try to find out the acceleration, we know that uh, for this one, uh, for this particle P, it is um, moving up. Okay, um, so for that one, okay, because uh, for this one, right, um, we know that the uh, the weight is a uh, 20, uh, 20 Newton, okay? For the uh, the force that is uh, pulling it up is 20 Newton as well. So uh, for this one, we are not so sure that uh, whether the um, this particle will actually move up or um, the 20 Newton is not enough uh, for the uh, particle to move up. It might actually slide down, we do not know. So it depends on the forces which we have, the 20 and also for the 2G. Um, for the uh, the weight. So in that case, what we do is we just assume, okay, let's say we just assume uh, this uh, particle will actually moves up, okay, where the A, the acceleration is going upward. So if we have the A is going upward by considering the F is uh, equals to MA, okay, so this is what we have for F is equals to MA. So our F, uh, the net force here is if we follow the direction of the acceleration, there will be a 20 Okay, going up minus um, the 2G, okay, which we actually resolve down the slope. So when we resolve down the slope, it will be two, uh, 2G sine um, 30. So for this one, the left hand side will actually give us a 10. Okay, so what do we mean by a positive uh, resultant force means, okay, the uh, resultant force is in the direction of the A that we have set earlier on. So in this case, the, uh, the particle will actually move uh, up. Okay, so we use this uh, net force is equal to MA and we can actually find out what is the A in this case. The A uh, for this one is a 5 okay, meter uh, per second squared. Um, so for um, part 2, find the velocity of P in terms of time, okay, whilst the uh, force of 20 Newton is applied. So basically is to find out the V. Knowing that we have uh, initial velocity, U is 0 because they said initially at rest and we know that the A is a 5 now. Okay, so uh, for this one, what we can do is we can actually consider by using V is equals to U plus uh, AT. Okay, so U is 0, uh, A is 5, and then the T is we do not know because they want us to find the velocity in terms of T. So we will just leave the T uh, as uh, T okay, in the expression. So at last, we'll actually have the V is equals to 5T okay, for our expression. Okay, so that's for the first question. Okay, second question. Okay, for second question, what we have here is, um, okay, we have a line in uh, extensible string, pass over a pulley. Okay, so this is a pulley question. And we have got uh, two particles, okay, 0 0.2 kg and 0 0.3 kg. Is, uh, they are uh, uh, attached to uh, opposite ends of the string. So, um, so that the parts of the string not contact with the pulley are vertical. So the system is released from rest uh, with the string taut. So for this one, it's the typical um, pulley question without any special case. Okay, so um, first find the acceleration of the particles and the tension in the string. So for this one, okay, because we have got um, two uh, particles which has a different uh, mass. So if we actually hang the, uh, the two particles with different mass, of course, uh, for this one, the uh, side okay, that has the higher mass will actually falls down. Okay, so in this case, we have got two particles. So one with the so this one is the one that has a 0 0.2 kg. This one is the one that has a 0 0.3 kg. So we know that if we actually release it, okay, the uh, the pulley, okay, the particles will actually move, okay, to um, 
the direction of the 0 0.3 uh, kg that one uh, so basically for this 0 0.3 kg particle it will actually move down so it is helpful for us to mark okay the acceleration so the acceleration is going down so for that case the 0 0.2 kg will go up so the acceleration for this one is going up so why is it so important for us to mark the acceleration is that we must always follow the direction of the acceleration to determine the force is a positive or a negative force so from this case we can actually uh, uh, write down okay the equation for f equals to ma for the two separate uh, particles in this case so for the two uh, particles okay we have 0 0.2 kg okay we look at the first one so for the first one we have got t which is going up okay we follow this uh, direction of the uh, acceleration so t is a positive uh, force opposing it okay would be the force which is the weight which is 0 0.2 uh, g so the 0 0.2 g will have the negative sign here so that two forces will actually become the net force so in, the, uh, in this case we will have um, the net force is equal to m a the m is a 0 0.2 likewise okay for um, the uh, case for the 0 0.3 kg particle so now the acceleration is going downward okay so for the forces which is going down we take the positive uh, going up will be the negative so going down we have uh, 0 0.3 g okay so this will take the positive force the negative forces would be the t because this t is in the opposite of the acceleration so that's why we have got a negative t in this case as the uh, the net force so this one is equal to m a okay so of course the uh, things followed by that would be uh, solving for the t and the a so in this case they actually need us to find out both the acceleration and the tension so for this one um, just use any method okay that you would like to solve okay for this case um, we can okay try to add up the two equations then we will actually end up the value for the a is the uh, 2 meter per second squared so with this um, value of the a just substitute into any equation that we like and we can actually find out what is the value for the tension Okay, so this gives us the value for the acceleration as well as the tension. Okay, so um, the second part, okay, when the heavier particle has fallen 2.25 meter, it hits the ground and it is brought to uh, rest. So find the speed with uh, which it hits the ground. So this is uh, to look at what is the speed, okay, before it actually hits the ground. So in other words, is this particle, okay, has already traveled for 2.25 meter. So we are looking at what is the velocity after it has traveled for 2.25 uh, meter with the initial velocity is a zero because they are released from rest. Okay, so what we know is we have got, um, the, uh, we can use V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS because V is what we wanted to find. And we know that the U, okay, the initial velocity is a zero and we have other information already. So we have um, the A, the acceleration is what we have found earlier. Okay. The uh, displacement S here is given up because it has already traveled for 2.25 meter. So in that case, we will have the V is 3 meter per second, okay, for this second part. All right. <clears throat> so we can also look at the next one. So for this one, okay, it's a uh, okay, barge which is being towed by a canal uh, along a canal by a force of 240 newton at an angle of uh, 25 degree to its direction of motion so a force of uh, f newton is perpendicular to the direction of the motion is applied to the barge to keep it moving in the direction uh, shown so first okay find the direction uh, the magnitude of uh, f okay so for this one what happens is that we have got uh, this barge okay the, the um, direction of motion is directly to the right so it means the net force is to the right Okay, so the object will always move in the direction of the net force. So what does that mean is uh, when we have this uh, object, okay, move um, is moving to the right, okay, it means in other direction there is no uh, resultant force. So if you look at the uh, forces that we have, again, we have got the F Newton, which is pointing down, and we have the 240 Newton, okay, which is pointing somewhere, which has a 25 um, degree. So it means that if we actually resolve this uh, 240 Newton, okay, to vertical, so it means that this um, 240 Newton, which is resolved to the vertical, will cancel out, okay, the force that we have for the F. 
Okay, so it means um, vertical, there is no uh, resultant force, means in this case, the F, okay, value will just take the 240 sine 25, okay, resolve the uh, 240 vertically. So for this one, we will actually get the value for the F is 101, which is uh, corrected to uh, 3SF. All right, so the next one would be um, the mass of barge is uh, 1100 kg and there's a resistance force of 100 newton parallel to the direction of motion. So find the acceleration of the barge. So <clears throat> for this one is by using the F is equal to MA again. Okay, so we know that for this direction of the motion, we have got the net force. So we need to find out what is the net force in this case. Considering now we have got 100 newton of the, um, the resistance. So for this one, we have got 100 newton as the resistance. Okay, so how do we find the net force is we have to resolve this down. Okay, so we have got 240, okay, cost 25 to minus 100. So this is how we get our uh, net force, okay, which is to the right. So this net force is equal to MA, the M is already given. All right, so from there, we actually have the acceleration is given by this value, okay, which is rounded to uh, 3SF. Okay, so that's for the third question. So, okay, for this uh, question number four here is a bit um, long. Okay, it's a 10 months question. So quite a bit of work to do. So if you look at the situation here, we have got um, a particle is projected up a long smooth slope, okay, uh, with a speed of 2.5 meter per second. And then the slope is at an angle theta, okay, where the sine theta is 1 over 25. And uh, after two seconds, it passes the mark on the slope. So uh, find the total time taken from the moment of projection until it passes the mark again, okay? And the total distance traveled in that time. So um, a lot of things that we have to consider. So before we can actually find out what are the time taken and also the total distance, okay? As uh, there's another th um, thing that is uh, important for us to find out is we need to find out where there's the acceleration in this case. Uh, considering this uh, particle is moving on a slope, so the, uh, the acceleration is quite important here. So um, by just sketching, okay, what happened to the forces, okay, that we have um, on the slope with this uh, particle. So the only force that we have to consider is the mg, okay, because there is no friction given here and there's no other forces which is pulling um, the uh, the particle okay so there is only uh, mg which is the weight which affects the acceleration so when we actually try to uh, look at the motion that is trying to going up so we have got the a is going up so there is no forces which is going up so the only force okay that we have okay which is going in the opposite direction of the acceleration in this case is our mg so we have to resolve this mg down the slope Okay, so for this one, this force will actually take the negative, okay, and uh, this is why um, the negative is there, right? because I actually move the negative to another side. So basically, if you actually use the negative mg sine theta, this is the force which is in the opposite direction of our acceleration, so we will actually have ma, okay, so in my working, I already moved the negative over. So there, uh, So this actually gives us the acceleration. Okay, because we do not need to know what is a mass because we can always cancel out the mass from here. So from there, we actually get the acceleration is negative 0 0.4 meter per second squared. Okay, so uh, the next thing that we have to do is we have to find out, okay, what happened when the uh, particle reaches um, the, uh, the mark. Okay, because it took some time to actually reach um, the mark. So in this case, it, um, it took um, two seconds, okay, to actually reach the mark, okay, because uh, we have to use the mark as the um, as the points that we consider the different uh, motion, okay. So initially, okay, remember it uh, is uh, it started with the uh, the velocity of two point five. Let's say we call this as um, the initial velocity u, which is two point five. Time taken is two, and then we have the acceleration. The acceleration is negative zero point four. So in this case, although it is going up the hill, it, it's slowing down, okay? Uh, I mean, this is logic because if we actually projected some uh, particle up a slope, it will actually slow down, okay? So the A is equal to negative 0 0.4 in this case. Lah. So it's a negative acceleration, means this particle is actually slowing down while it actually moves up the slope, okay? 
So in this case, there are few things that, uh, there are few things that we need to find. So first is the velocity at uh, the mark. So at the mark there, we have got um, the velocity is equal to u plus at. So um, in this case, at the mark there, the velocity is 1.7. Okay, and another thing that we need to find out is we need to find out how far it has already traveled because in our question they ask for the distance that it has already traveled from the starting point, go up the slope, and go down again until we actually have um, we reach the um, mark. Okay, so there are actually three stages. So this one we are actually calculating for the first stage where from the starting point to the mark. Okay, so from starting point to the mark, okay, we actually have um, 4.2 meter. Okay, so this particle has already traveled for um, 4.2 meter by using all the information that we have here to calculate the distance travel. So this is for the first stage. Okay, so um, now we actually have um, the um, motion okay, that we need to consider from the mark and then until it reaches the highest point because the ball will eventually, sorry, the particle will eventually stop and changes the direction. So we're looking at the second stage here. So for this second stage, okay, from the mark, okay, we copy from the mark. So from the mark, the um, velocity that is uh, that we have at the mark there is uh, 1.7 meter per second. And at last it must come to a stop. So the V is a zero. And the acceleration doesn't change, uh, it is still the same, which is negative 0.4. So in this case, we find out what is the time taken that the ball takes from the mark to the highest point uh, up the slope. Okay, and at the same time, we also need to find out how far the particle has traveled from the mark to the highest point. Okay, so we use um, other uh, information that is available Okay, for us to find out what is the value for the S in this case. Okay, so the last stage of this motion is from the top of the slope, we need to go back to the mark again. So when we actually try to uh, do that, um, the initial velocity is a zero because it started from rest because somehow you actually stop and then it will change the direction. Okay, so the u is a zero and the, the distance travel, so from the top to the mark, we already find out what is the distance early on. So this will be the value 3.6125. As for the acceleration, the acceleration will take the value of uh, 0 0.4. So basically, is instead of decelerating, it will actually going faster because it's going down now. So why can we just take the 0 0.4? Okay, from the uh, a is the, uh, equals to negative 0 0.4. In that case, is for the case which is going down. So this is our mg, and there is no other forces. So this one is our mg sine theta. Okay, so before this, when we actually find the A, before this going up, okay, the A is um, negative G sine theta. Okay, so going down, the A is positive G sine theta. So the G sine theta is a 0 0.4 in this case. Okay, so we will take the A, which is 0 0.4, and we try to find out what is the, um, the time taken to go down. So it uh, appears that it's the same, okay, time 4.25 because the A actually doesn't change, just that one is slowing down, one is going faster and it goes from um, and it goes from a certain velocity to rest. Now it's from rest, we are going to a certain velocity. Okay, but it is always safe to actually redo the calculation again. Okay, so for this one, okay, we can actually already find out what is the total time taken. So the total time taken, we need to start counting from the beginning, okay, of the motion. So the beginning of the motion, what we have is um, the time taken for the beginning of the motion is uh, 2 seconds, okay, it's as given in the question, we have got 2 seconds, and then the time taken for both would be 4.25 going up and 4.25 going down. So when we just add them together, okay, we will get 10.5 seconds. So it took a total of 10.5 seconds, okay, for the motion. All right. Um, distance, so for distance is, um, the first part is um, 4.2 meter. So this 4.2 meter is before it reaches the mark, okay, from the starting point to the mark when the particle is going up. So for uh, that one is 4.2. And um, from the mark to the highest point, we have got 3.615. So this 3.615 we have to times 2 because the uh, the particle goes from the mark, go up to the highest point, and then it has to go back to the mark again. 
So this is why we multiply the 3.615 by 2. So from there, we actually get this uh, total distance that um, the particle has already traveled. All right, so that will be um, for this uh, question four. Okay, question five. So a particle of mass um, 0 0.01 kg is projected upward okay, at ground level with the initial speed of 165 meter per second, um, reaches the maximum height of this one uh, 1, 2, 7, uh, 3, 7.5 meter. So throughout its motion, it experiences a constant resistance. So um, find the acceleration of the particle as it uh, ascends, okay, and hence find the magnitude of the resistance. Okay, so for this one, we have got um, some information that is uh, that allows us to find out what is the acceleration in this case because now they actually talk about the forces okay there are forces which involves okay in this uh, motion so um, there are a lot of things that we can actually do already it reaches the maximum height so the v here is a zero okay starting with a speed of 165 that would be our u and then it actually travel for 1273.5 so in this case the uh, displacement that uh, it has already traveled is uh, 137.5, which is our S in this case. So for that one, the A is um, negative 11. Okay. So we will actually use this A is equals to uh, negative 11, okay, for us to find out what is the resistance force by considering all the forces that we have. So in this case, we have got the... Uh, the uh, particle, okay, is actually going up, so the acceleration will actually follows the direction. So that will actually always fix that as the x, uh, the a. So in that case, we have got the two forces. One would be the uh, the weight for the particle itself, which is zero point zero one g, and then another one is the resistance. The resistance is always in the opposite direction of the motion. So for these two cases, okay, they are both um opposite okay they are in the opposite direction of our motion um, so they will actually both take the value for the negative and in that case we have got the ma for the right hand side so the a here is negative 11 okay so in that case when we actually solve for the r the r is 0 0.01 newton okay so that would be for our first part for the second part, it says, okay, during its uh, descent back to G, the particle experiences the same constant resistance. So find the time taken for the descent. So, okay, from there, okay, we know already know what is the resistance force. Okay, so if you actually uh, try to um, sketch out what happened to the forces again, is we have got again, weight is going down, and now the resistance, which is 0 0.01, is going up already because it is opposing, uh, sorry, I should say in the opposite direction of our motion and then because this particle is going down. So since this particle is going down, the A is also going down, okay, the direction of the A. So here, okay, we start um, to consider the F is equal to MA. So MA is just um, 0.01A for the um, right hand side, left hand side for the net force. The net force is we have got 0.01g which is going down to minus with 0.01 which is going in the opposite direction so in that case we get the a is a 9 okay so with this okay we can actually find out uh, what is the time needed for us to go from the top to the ground level so it has to travel this distance okay because that will be the the height given in the question and uh, u is a 0 because it actually go up stop and then go down again okay so the u is equal to zero so just sub uh, substitute all the other values in okay like the uh, the a the a here is a nine and then we are supposed to find out what is the time uh, what is the time taken for this one so for this one the time taken will be 16.6 uh, second which is rounded to uh, 3sf all right okay next one okay so for this question we have got um the uh, figure which is given quite clearly already we have got our uh, two particles um, a has the mass which is m1 um, b has the mass which is uh, m2 and given that the sine theta is a 3 over 5 so particle a is connected by a light stream um, and basically this is the, the description okay that is quite um, 
usual lah. Okay, there's nothing special about this uh, pulley system. It's just the usual pulley system. So first, in the case when M2 is a uh, half M1, okay, the particle A is uh, on the point of sliding down the slope. So draw a fully labeled diagram to show all the forces. So, okay, let's just uh, look at the uh, forces that we have here. Um, for particle B, for particle B, um, there's uh, not a lot, uh, not a lot involved. Um, basically, we have the tension for the particle B and also the weight for the particle B and that's it. Okay, because it's hanging freely. Okay, uh, for particle A, uh, a few more things that we have to consider. Of course, the tension going up the slope, and we have got the uh, weight of this particle A, m1g, and reaction force going um, up. Okay, which is perpendicular to the surface, and um. Okay, for this case, the friction. So why do we have to consider the friction is particle A is on the point of sliding um, down the slope. So it means to prevent this uh, particle to go down the slope, there must be a friction which is going up, okay, to prevent it to go down. So this is why we have the friction which is given by mu r in this case, which is going up the slope. Okay, so this, uh, this will actually complete like, all the forces that we have for this uh, part A. Okay, so part B, okay, find the coefficient of friction between A and the slope. So for this one, we have uh, a few um, uh, equations to consider. So first, uh, the easiest one to start with is, of course, the B, because the B only has two forces. Okay, so for this one, it is in equilibrium because it is at the point of the um, sliding down. So it means it is in equi still in equilibrium. It is going to, okay, slide down the slope, but it is now in equilibrium. So, um, we have got uh, from particle B, okay, we can see that the T is T is equal to M2G, okay, which is quite obvious from here. And if you actually consider the like, other forces here, so, okay, let's say we look at the uh, forces which is uh, in the direction of the uh, reaction force. So we have got R, okay, let me just clean out a little bit. So we have got R going up, so we need to find out what is this force, okay, we have this force going down. So for this force, is uh, M1G cos theta. Okay, so this is why we have this M1G cos theta. Okay, so when I actually calculate the value for the cos theta, right, we are not, remember, whenever the angle are given in this case, okay, when it gives us a sign and the cos of the angle, we are not supposed to uh, find out what is a theta and sub into the cos theta where we want to find the value for the cos theta. Okay, remember, so it is always, it can be done by using this okay sketching a right angle triangle based on the ratio of the sine theta given to give like other values of let's say cos theta and sine theta okay doing this is uh, always helpful so by uh, drawing this triangle we find out that the cos theta is a 4 over 5 so this uh, gives us the um, the expression for the r in this case is a 4 over 5 m1g Okay, we need to find this R. So after that, considering the forces which are parallel uh, to the uh, slope, so we have got two forces going up, which is T and mu R. The only force which is going down is we resolve the mg. So we have got m1g sine theta. Okay, so T plus mu R is equal to m1g sine theta. Okay, so that is what we have for the uh, forces. Um, so, we know that for T is equal to M2G, we already know it earlier on. And for the R here, we already have it here also. So, just sub in the R in this case. Okay, so M1G sine theta is just um, 3 over 5, okay, for the sine theta. So, for the next one is trying to uh, solve this um, mu, okay, we are trying to find the mu, the coefficient of the friction. So, we have to cancel out, uh, obviously here the G can be cancelled out for this. And we have got the M1 and M2. So we use the relationship given for the M1 and M2 to um, cancel. So it is given that for M2, it is half of the M1. So every term here that we have here, uh, they are all in M1. So we can actually also cancel out the M1. So basically the work after that is to uh, find out the value for the, uh, the mu. We only have the mu left, okay, in the uh, expression. So the mu, it, uh, it actually gives us um, 108. Okay, so that would be for um, the part 1b. 
okay so if we look at the uh, part two so in the case when m2 is equal to m1 the acceleration uh, find the acceleration of the particles so for this case right if we have the m1 here is equals to m2 so let's say we just assume that the uh, particle will actually move in this direction let's just assume because um, somehow the B will actually go down when they have the same mass because one is resting on the um, the A is resting resting on a surface and then for this one it is hanging there so we suspect that um, the B will actually go down let's just assume this case first and see whether it's correct or not okay so um, from there okay say the B will actually fall okay then we have got uh, like different things to consider now already so if you look at the okay if you look at the uh, the figure again uh, so now we have got uh, if we look at the B now so that uh, for B the acceleration is going downward okay so when we have the acceleration is going downward we need to form the F is equal to MA already because now we have got the A okay so net force here is M um, okay let us just do it here so the net force is M2G minus T is equal to M2A okay in fact here we can just ignore the uh, M1 and M2 because they are both the same mass already to simplify a bit our expression so this happened for our um, B okay so for um, the particle A so in this case for particle A uh, there is one thing that we have to be careful is because since now the A is moving up the slope already so now the friction is not uh, going up anymore it should go down already because it the friction should always move in the op uh, should always act okay in the opposite direction of our motion so since the a is going up we must have the friction which is going down the slope so for this okay when we actually consider the forces okay let me just clean this a little bit and write it here okay so when we consider the forces we have got uh, going up okay will be uh, the positive uh, forces so in this case we will actually have t Okay, we have got minus mu r minus mg cos theta in this case, which is equal to um, ma. Okay, so this is what we get for the equation. Okay, so from there, okay, so from there, what we have is uh, if we actually work with the second equation here, so just sub in the necessary values that we have um, for that. So this one okay we have got the sine theta is 3 over 5 and we have got the mu r as well the mu is 1 over 8 the r here the r is still the same the r is still 4 over 5 mg because there is nothing uh, change okay for the, the uh, for the reaction force so this is our r okay so from there we actually, uh, we actually just tidy up from this 3 over 5 mg and this okay in order for us to do our uh, calculation easier so we actually have t minus uh, 0 0.7 mg is equal to ma okay so for this uh, simplify uh, somehow simplify uh, equation we just have to solve it with the first equation that we have got earlier on so um, by using any method to solve it okay this will be the values okay for the acceleration in this case so we get uh, 1.5 uh, uh, for this acceleration okay so that will be the part two okay last question so um for this, we have got a car, okay, 1,900 kg, towns a caravan. Um, we have got the caravan is 800 kg, so along a straight horizontal road. So it's a horizontal road, so the, the things will actually simplify a lot. So the caravan is attached to the car by a horizontal tow bar. So in this case, it is um, the tow bar. Okay, so they are they are in uh, the uh, they they are connected particles, but in this case the connected particles they are uh, not the pulley because pulley we connect them by a string, but for this one is a tau bar. Okay, so the situation that we have to consider is a little bit different from the uh, the the uh, the pulley. So remember, pulley has their own way in solving, and then also this kind of uh, towing um, has different way in solving. Okay. 
So a constant force of magnitude 500 Newton, okay, resists the motion of the car. So remember that is for the car. And for the 400 Newton is for the caravan. So the caravan has also a resistance. So the engine of the car produces a constant driving force of 2,600 Newton. Okay, so first find the acceleration of the car. Okay, so in this question, although they say, okay, we want to find the acceleration of the car, but in fact, the two uh, vehicles, they're actually connected together. So the, uh, the acceleration of the car would be the same as the acceleration of the car because they are connected together. They cannot have different acceleration. Okay, so before we actually find out all those, okay, it's good for us to always uh, sketch, okay, what happened um, to the car and the caravan. So, uh, the first, the, the second object here is for our car. Okay, so let's just look at what happened to the car there. So, the car has this driving force, resistance, okay, and then because the car and the car they are connected by a bar, so there is a tension which is going, okay, um, out, okay, from this car for the, um, for the bar. Okay, so that's basically what happened to our car. The van, so the van has also the tension because they are both connected. And of course, we have got the, um, the uh, weight of the caravan, okay, and also the resistant force of the caravan. And in this case, the acceleration is going in that way, okay, to the right. So what happens is that um, when we actually consider, okay, this acceleration, because acceleration is something that uh, involves the whole thing, okay, the car and the caravan, they must have the same acceleration, like I said. So we have to consider the net force overall. So when we actually consider all the forces we have got, the forces which is going to the right, okay, which is in the direction of the acceleration, there's only one, which is 2,600. That is the only force that is going to the right. To the left, we have got 400 and 500, so both of them are resistant. So we have to consider the negative okay, of the 500 and the 400. So what happened to the tension is that when we actually add the two tensions together, because one is going to the right, one is going to the left, they basically cancel out because they are connected together and we consider them as um, Okay, so um, the um, we actually consider them together, okay, as a whole thing, okay. So we have to add up their uh, their masses together. So when we actually uh, calculate this, we'll actually get uh, the a is uh, zero point six three o meter per second squared, which we round off to um, to uh, three set. All right. So uh, the next part, okay, is to find the magnitude um, of the force in the tau bar. So basically, is to find the tension, uh, basically, in the tau uh, bar. So for this one, because uh, the tension involves the caravan and the, uh, and the car, so we can just use any of the vehicles that we like to actually calculate this tension, okay? So instead of consider them as uh, together as one thing, now we can look at them separately because, again, they are having the same acceleration, Okay, we can actually uh, separate them because now we want to calculate the T already because when we actually consider them together, the T will cancel off. So we have to now look at them separately. So when um, we have it separately, okay, in this case, uh, we are looking at the, the case for this caravan. So again, the acceleration is to the right. So we have the T is a positive because the T is to the right. To the left, we have got the resistance, which is 400. So this one, okay, the net force is equal to MA. The M is the mass for the van. The A here, the acceleration is uh, the value that we have found earlier on. Okay, so from this, we just have to do the calculation and we are able to find out what is the value for this tension in the tau bar. Okay, so um, basically that is it for um, the um, questions. Okay, so thank you. I'll see you in the next uh, session.